our two times together. Today we will meditate on the Holy Eucharist as the heart of the life and mission of the ordained priest. My presentation in these two conferences inspired both by theological reflection upon the mystery of faith, the Eucharistic mystery, and its essential relationship to the ordained priesthood, and by my personal experience as a priest. To the degree that I have been a good and faithful priest, the truth of what the Church teaches concerning the relationship of the Holy Eucharist and the Holy Priesthood has been at the heart of my priestly life and ministry. That is, it has kept me focused on my priestly identity, and it has been the source from which I have drawn the wisdom and strength to respond to my priestly vocation with an undivided heart. Pope St. John Paul II, in his book, Gift and Mystery, written on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of his priestly ordination, commenting on the words of the priest, the mystery of faith, after the consecration of the bread and wine, changing them into the body and blood of Christ, wrote, is not the deepest reason, is this not the deepest reason behind the priestly vocation? Certainly it is already fully present at the time of ordination, but it needs to be interiorized and deepened for the rest of the priest's life. Only in this way can a priest discover in depth the great treasure which has been entrusted to him. Fifty years after my ordination, I can say that in the words Mysterium Fide, we find ever more each day the meaning of our own priesthood. The priest who prays becomes ever more conscious that his entire priestly life is at the service of the mystery of faith, the mystery of the redemptive incarnation, which is experienced directly and perfectly in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. The first intimations of the priestly vocation in my life came by way of wonder at the Eucharistic mystery. In the growing awareness of Christ's call to the priesthood in my life, which led to my entrance into the seminary, it was most of all participation in the Eucharistic sacrifice and Eucharistic adoration which continued to draw me to the priesthood and helped me to understand more and more the meaning of the priestly vocation. Having grown up during a time of strong Eucharistic devotion, my last years in the seminary and my first years of priestly life coincided with a period of crisis in Eucharistic faith and of abandonment of Eucharistic devotion by many. During the crisis, It was my earlier strong formation in Eucharistic faith and devotion received both at home and in the minor seminary, which sustained me. The suffering of the crisis taught me ever more, taught me even more, the essential importance of Eucharistic faith and devotion, both for the response to the vocation to the priesthood and for the fulfillment of the mission entrusted to the ordained priest. I have often thought that the reason why during those years so many seminarians abandoned their studies for the priesthood and why so few responded to the priestly vocation by entering the seminary was the loss of Eucharistic faith and devotion, without which the priestly vocation cannot be identified and indeed makes no sense. I have thought similarly about the tragic abandonment of the priestly ministry by so many priests during those same years. The reflection on the objective reality of the relationship of the ordained priesthood to the Holy Eucharist, in fact, naturally leads to a deeper conviction about the essential role of Eucharistic faith and devotion in the life of the seminarian or priest. I now offer some reflections on the Holy Eucharist and the Holy Priesthood with the specific purpose of underlining various aspects of Eucharistic devotion in the response to the priestly vocation and mission. 
First, the priesthood and the pastoral charity of our Lord Jesus Christ. The ordained priest, by the grace of the sacrament of orders, acts in the person of Christ, head and shepherd of the flock, in every time and place, by his teaching, his sacramental ministration, and his governance. Pope St. John Paul II, in his post-synodal apostolic exhortation, Pastores Dabo Vobis, on the formation of priests in the circumstances of the present day, making reference to the decree Presbyterorum Ordinis on the life and ministry of priests of the Second Vatican Ecumenical Council, declared, By sacramental consecration, the priest is configured to Jesus Christ as head and shepherd of the Church, and he is endowed with a spiritual power, which is a share in the authority with which Jesus Christ guards the Church, guides the Church through his Spirit. He goes on to explain that by the grace of priestly consecration, the spiritual life of the priest is marked, molded, and characterized by the way of thinking and acting proper to Jesus Christ, head and shepherd of the Church, and which are summed up in his pastoral charity. It is clear that the offering of the holy sacrifice of the Mass is the fullest expression of the pastoral charity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through the grace of ordination to the sacred priesthood, the priest is conformed to the person of Christ in his pastoral charity. The priest's soul is indelibly marked for the exercise of pastoral charity. The, the pastoral charity of Christ on behalf of all men. It is therefore by the offering of the holy sacrifice of the Mass for the salvation of the world that the priest most fully and perfectly carries out the high priestly ministry of Christ to which he has been called and for which he has been consecrated. In Pastores Dabo Vobis, and here I repeat something which I said in last evening's homily, but I think it bears uh, re repeating, uh, Pope St. John Paul II made specific reference to the highest expression of the priestly office, recalling the words of the ordaining bishop when he places the offerings for the Holy Mass in the hands of the newly ordained priest. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do. Imitate what you celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Regarding what has been called the traditio instrumentorum, the handing over of the paten with the bread and the chalice with the wine for the celebration of the Holy Mass, and the accompanying words, Pope John Paul II declared, This is the invitation and admonition which the Church addresses to the priest in the rite of ordination, when the offerings of the holy people for the Eucharistic sacrifice are placed in his hands. The mystery of which the priest is a steward is definitively Jesus Christ himself, who in the Spirit is the source of holiness and the call to sanctification. This mystery seeks expression in the priestly life, for this to be so, there is need for great vigilance and lively awareness. In fact, at every moment of the priest's life and ministry, he is returning to the Eucharistic sacrifice as the highest and most perfect expression of his priestly identity in order to understand his priestly mission of pastoral charity and to have the strength to carry out his divinely given mission. Regarding the spiritual life of the priest, Pope John Paul II declared, The internal principle, the force which animates and guides the spiritual life of the priest, inasmuch as he is configured to Christ, the head and shepherd, is pastoral charity, as a participation in Jesus Christ's own pastoral charity, a gift freely bestowed by the Holy Spirit, 
and likewise a task and a call which demand a free and committed response on the part of the priest. In Pastoris Dabo Vobis, Pope John Paul II is emphatic about the essential place of Eucharistic faith and devotion in the life of the priest. Commenting on the fundamental importance of participation in the sacramental life of the Church, for the gift and task of that pastoral charity which is the soul of priestly ministry, he noted, above all, the importance of participation in the Holy Eucharist, for priests, as ministers of sacred things, are first and foremost ministers of the sacrifice of the Mass. The role is utterly irreplaceable because without the priest there can be no Eucharistic offering. Regarding the place of the Holy Eucharist in the life of the priest, Pope John Paul II, quoting at length from his Angelus Address of July 1, 1990, declared, This explains the essential importance of the Eucharist for the priest's life and ministry and as a result in the spiritual formation of candidates for the priesthood. To be utterly frank and clear, I would like to say once again, it is fitting that seminarians take part every day in the Eucharistic celebration in such a way that afterwards they will take up as a rule of their priestly life this daily celebration. They should, moreover, be trained to consider the Eucharistic celebration as the essential moment of their day, in which they will take an active part and at which they will never be satisfied with a merely habitual attendance. Finally, candidates to the priesthood will be trained to share in the intimate dispositions which the Eucharist fosters. Gratitude for heavenly benefits received because the Eucharist is thanksgiving. An attitude of self-offering which will impel them to unite the offering of themselves to the Eucharistic offering of Christ. Charity nourished by a sacrament which is a sign of unity and sharing. The yearning to contemplate and bow in adoration before Christ, who is really present under the Eucharistic species. To daily participation in the Holy Mass, the priest will naturally unite Eucharistic devotion, above all visits to the Blessed Sacrament and prolonged prayer before the tabernacle or before the Eucharistic host exposed in the monstrance. Only through Eucharistic devotion will the priest be able to extend and deepen the communion in the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, which is Christ's supreme gift to him through the Eucharistic sacrifice. It is through Eucharistic devotion that the intimate dispositions to which Pope John Paul II refers are safeguarded and cultivated. Eucharistic devotion in no way detracts from the central importance of the celebration of the Holy Mass. Rather, it prepares the priest to be more fully engaged in the Eucharistic sacrifice. At the same time, the reality of the Holy Eucharist, containing the entire good of our salvation, is so great that it can it can naturally inspires the desire to manifest in a concrete way loving devotion to our Eucharistic Lord. The second reflection, St. John Mary Vianney, model of priestly Eucharistic devotion. It will be helpful to extend the reflection on the place of Eucharistic devotion in the life of the priest by reflecting on the life of St. John Mary Vianney. In his letter proclaiming a year for priests on the occasion of the 150th anniversary of the death of St. John Mary Vianney, the curé of ours, Pope Benedict XVI underlined in a particular way the centrality of Eucharistic faith and devotion 
in the life of the patron saint of parish priests. The Holy Father recalled how St. John Mary Vianney, arriving as the parish priest of our, ours, a village known for tepidity and coldness in the practice of the faith, chose to live physically in his parish church. The Holy Curé of ours, by seeking constantly the company of our Eucharistic Lord, drew the faithful to Christ in his real presence in the most blessed sacrament. Seeking out the parish priest, they found him in the parish church, keeping company with the Lord. St. John Mary Vianney's exemplary Eucharistic faith rekindled the Eucharistic faith and practice of the parishioners. The evident identification of the curia of ours with Christ in his Eucharistic sacrifice in time also attracted the faithful to the sacrament of penance. Pope Benedict XVI observed, this deep personal identification with the sacrifice of the cross led him by a soul inward movement from the altar to the confessional. Pope Benedict XVI underlined the essential relationship between the sacraments of the Holy Eucharist and penance as it is exemplified in the priestly ministry of St. John Mary Vianney. He observed, The curé of ours sought in every way by his preaching and his powers of persuasion to help his parishioners to rediscover the meaning and beauty of the sacrament of penance presenting it as an inherent demand of the Eucharistic presence. He thus created a virtuous circle, as opposed to a vicious circle, uh, by spending long hours in church before the tabernacle, he inspired the faithful to imitate him by coming to visit Jesus with the knowledge that their parish priest would be there, rather ready to listen and to offer forgiveness. The faithful did not fail to identify their parish priest with Christ, who is all-merciful toward us. Pouring out his life for the salvation of men without boundary in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, and hearing the confession of their sins and absolving them from their sins in the sacrament of penance. Here it must be noted that the Eucharistic devotion of a priest will always be closely connected with the daily examination of conscience and act of contrition before retiring each evening, and the regular encounter with Christ in the sacrament of penance for the confession of sins and the reception of absolution. The faithful, observing the fervent Eucharistic devotion of St. John Mary Vianney, were given the grace of a conversion of heart which expressed itself in Eucharistic devotion. Pope Benedict XVI, commenting on the profound effect of the example of the priest on the Eucharistic devotion of the faithful, declared, St. John Mary Vianney taught his parishioners primarily by the witness of his life. It was from his example that they learned to pray, halting frequently before the tabernacle, for a visit to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. St. John Mary Vianney urged the faithful, notwithstanding their unworthiness, to draw close to our Lord in the most blessed sacrament. At the same time, his manner of offering the Holy Holy Mass taught the people the truth of the real presence and of the thirst of Christ for their souls. They learned from the example of the Holy Curé the great mystery of God's all-merciful love of us, which is expressed most fully and compellingly in Christ making present for us anew in the Eucharistic sacrifice, the outpouring of his life for our salvation. St. John Mary Vianney, from his Eucharistic devotion, understood that he, like Christ, was both priest and victim. His Eucharistic devotion developed in him an ever greater disposition to pour out his life in pure and selfless love of the faithful, as Christ did through his death on the cross. Quoting the curé, Pope Benedict XVI observed, 
he was accustomed, when celebrating, also to offer his own life and sacrifice. What a good thing it is for a priest each morning to offer himself to God in sacrifice. For a deeper appreciation of the necessary correlation of the identity of the priest with his identity of victim of love, I recommend the book of the Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, The Priest is Not His Own, especially the first chapter entitled, More Than a Priest. Reflecting upon the Holy Eucharist, sacrament, and sacrifice as the primary manifestation of the twofold identity of priest and victim, the Venerable Archbishop Sheen wrote, As priests, we offer Christ in the Mass, but as victims, do we offer ourselves with Christ in the Mass? Shall we tear asunder that which God has joined, namely priesthood and victimhood? Does not the intimate connection between sacrifice and sacrament also tell us that we are not priests alone, but victims as well? If all we do in our priestly life is drain chalices and eat the bread of life, then how shall the Church fill up those sufferings that are wanting to the passion of Christ? Do we lift up Christ on the cross at the moment of elevation while being present as mere spectators at a drama in which we are intended to play the lead role? Is the Mass an empty repetition of Calvary? If so, what do we do with the cross we were bidden to take up daily? How can Christ renew his death in our own bodies? He dies again in us. And what about the people of God? Do we teach them that they must not only receive communion, but give too? They may not accept life while giving no sacrifice. The communion rail is a place of exchange. The people give time and receive eternity. They give self-denial and receive life. They give nothingness and receive all. Holy Communion commits each to a closer union not only with Christ's life, but also with his death. To greater detachment from the world, to surrender of luxuries for the sake of the poor, to death of the old Adam for rebirth in Christ, the new Adam. The priest is true to his identity with Christ the High Priest to the degree that he is, with Christ the High Priest, the victim for the salvation of the world. In the same way, his essential service to the people of God, not only providing to them the body of Christ, but manifesting Christ in his own body by his own pure and selfless love, especially at the cost of sacrifice and even death itself. This meditation is especially important for us as we are on the vigil of the inauguration of a jubilee of divine mercy. Uh, So much which is written about divine mercy uh, is quite superficial, as if our Lord simply forgives us all our sins without demanding of us in a relationship of love a corresponding response in the same way as our communion with our Lord in his sacrifice demands also a life of sacrificial love, of pure and selfless love. In the same way, The curé of ours was convinced that any superficiality or laxity of a priest in carrying out his sacred ministry flowed necessarily from a lack of fervor in offering the Holy Mass. Once again, quoting St. John Mary Vianney, 
Pope Benedict XVI commented on the saint's conviction that the fervor of a priest's life depended entirely on the Mass. The Curie of ours declared, the reason why a priest is lax is that he does not pay attention to the Mass. My God, how we ought to pity a priest who celebrates as if he were engaged in something routine. The saintly curé manifested the total sincerity of his words in his own priestly life centered in the Holy Eucharist. This regard, I would like to underline the importance of the preparation for the celebration of the Holy Mass and also of the thanksgiving at the conclusion of the Holy Mass in a very understandable way today when priests are often asked to celebrate uh, several Masses, uh, especially on on Sunday and even uh, sometimes on weekdays. uh, There can ensue an an attitude of of rushing, uh, almost a sense of of carrying out uh, uh, some function in the most efficient way possible. And then slowly uh, there erodes the the ontological, the reality of the ontological, uh, excuse me, the the recognition of the ontological reality of who is offering the Mass, uh, uh, Jesus Christ himself, to whom we have lent our whole being uh, for his, his sacrifice. that regard even uh, to return uh, to the prayers for vesting at Mass, I think it would be a very helpful and practical way to curb uh, this, as I say, it's understandable, but deadly uh, inattention and superficiality uh, in approaching what is the chief priestly work, uh, our offering of the Holy Mass. In fidelity to the magisterium, St. John Mary Vianney taught the essential bond of the holy priesthood with the most blessed sacrament. Regarding the priestly vocation, the saint declared, Oh, how great is the priest. If he realized what he is, he would die. God obeys him. He utters a few words, and the Lord descends from heaven at his voice to be contained within a small host. On many occasions, the Kyrie of ours led the faithful to a deeper faith in and love of the sacrament of the holy priesthood by reminding them that the holy priesthood exists primarily for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist and that the celebration of the Holy Eucharist cannot take place without the Holy Priesthood. I will continue the reflection this afternoon with uh, a few more points. I think that uh, these conferences on the Holy Eucharist are really the the heart of of our meditation during these days. Then, then in the other conferences, I'll try to draw out some particular aspects. But surely, in your own prayer and reflection, you will. Uh, Consider so many aspects of your priestly life and ministry and uh, return to them with a, a, a new and, and, and greater appreciation uh, because of the meditation upon uh, your priestly uh, character as it is ordered essentially uh, to the Eucharistic sacrifice and in which it also has its its source and its strength.